Businesses receiving federal government grants of more than $20 million will now have to disclose how much Australian labour, products and services they use. The announcement was made during the Future Jobs Forum in Canberra, which the opposition has dismissed as simply another talk fest. Senator Erica Betts is the opposition spokesman for Employment and Workplace Relations and he joins us now from Hobart. Senator, good morning and thanks for being with us. Good morning. Now, you have, dis as I mentioned, dismissed this as another talk fest, but your leader this morning has given in principle support to the outcomes from the forum. The talk fest that we had in Canberra yesterday did not take into account 75% of Australia's workforce, namely the small business sector. Independent contractors, small business, they were all excluded. In another example of how this government does business, it's big government with big business and big unions, excluding 75% of those Australians that are in fact employed in small business or are self-employed. Now to ignore that huge cohort of the Australian employment population just indicates how out of touch this government is with the realities that are out there in the workplace. But given that this forum was particularly really about manufacturing jobs, what do you think about some of the outcomes that came out of it, particularly this so-called naming and shaming clause where companies will be required to publicise on a website the details of the local materials that they use for major projects? There are a lot of small businesses in the manufacturing sector as well. Look, anything that will assist Australian manufacturing within reason is of course to be welcomed and that is why the Coalition uh, supports that. But like with Labor, like with everything Labor does, you will get the big announcement as we got yesterday, let's wait for the detail, let's see its implementation and I fear it's going to go the same way as the East Timor solution, the Malaysia solution, pink bats. It's always a great headline until Labor tries to implement something and that's when they always fall into difficulty. Do you doubt that there will be any new jobs created or even perhaps existing jobs protected as a result of the outcomes of this forum? The best thing that this government could do for the manufacturing sector would in fact be to say no carbon tax, provide some flexibility for the workforces and also uh, dump the mining tax. If you were to get rid of those uh, impediments to Australian productivity and to Australian jobs, a lot of these extra band-aid measures would in fact not be needed. So what we have with this government is they create a problem and then they come in and say aren't we good when they try to put a band-aid over the problem. What we need in this country is a firmer direction such as Tony Abbott is willing to provide. No carbon tax, no mining tax and having a look at how we can deal with issues in the workforce. You know though that the government uh, during this term of course is, is planning to introduce the carbon tax and obviously has no plans to repeal it. That is the coalition's policy though. What would the coalition do given that you're planning to repeal it if, if you win government in the next term and a lot of the discussion at this forum was about new jobs that would be created through the greener future uh, and, and funding provided through the carbon tax for compensation. What would the coalition do um, if you do repeal the carbon tax to uh, address that issue? of jobs that might be lost in the, in the greener technology industries. The Labor government has already lost in the last 12 months 53,000 manufacturing jobs. So the brave new green future clearly is not developing the sort of jobs that they're talking about. And when you have a look at Spain, California and other countries or economies that have gone down this track, Basically, for every so-called green job, you shed at least two, if not more, uh, mainstream jobs. So there is, in fact, a net loss of jobs when you go down this sort of forced path that Labor is trying to foist upon Australia. And let's make no mistake, this isn't genuine Labor policy. This is genuine Bob Brown Greens policy that Julia Gillard is foolishly embracing just so she can keep her job and everybody else's job is up for grabs. If we're talking about policy then, what is the Coalition's policy to protect manufacturing jobs apart from repealing the mining tax and the carbon tax? 
Sophie Mirabella, our spokesperson in this area, along with Tony Abbott, has already uh, announced an inquiry, and uh, we are isn't that another talk fest? In no, it's not, because uh, what we are actually doing is going to business, asking them to assist us in getting a policy platform together where we are in fact inviting small business to make submissions to us, not sitting there in Canberra in splendid isolation, not inviting small business, not inviting 75% of the Australian workforce to be part and parcel of uh, this sort of policy input. That's Labor's view. Our view is to go out into the regions to listen and learn and then ensure that we look after the manufacturing sector. But I recall just being in Geelong recently, small business starting up again and the carbon tax is going to put an extra $5,000 minimum on their cost per month. That is $60,000 off their bottom line because there is, they are so energy intensive and they aren't going to get any of the benefits that uh, Julia Gillard is promising to big business. This is a government that only deals with big unions and big business whereas the coalition is very much focused on the small and medium enterprises that are in fact the engine room for jobs growth in this country. Senator Abetz, we look forward to some of the policy outcomes that might come from those discussions with small business. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks a lot.